Good day everyone, this is Doc Ina and this is my video instructional on the proper way to do abdominal exam and Leopold's maneuvers. To download my lecture deck in PDF form, please go to my WordPress site, Doc Ina Obigaine. So first off, let me just say that the patient you see in this video presentation freely gave her express consent in participating in this video presentation. So what are the steps in doing an abdominal exam and Leopold's maneuvers? So first, Greet and introduce yourself to the patient. Explain the purpose and conduct of the examination and please use language or vocabulary that is appropriate and understandable. So first, instruct the patient to empty her bladder first and place the patient in a dorsal recumbent position. Place a small pillow under the head for comfort. Drape properly to maintain privacy. And while you have exposed the abdomen, Please note for any scars or any lesions on the abdomen, probably a CS scar or a scar from a previous operation like an exploratory laparotomy. Note also the presence of stria gravidarum, linea nigra, and diastasis recti if there's any. Also warm your hands by rubbing them together because cold hands can stimulate uterine contractions. And use the palm of your hand for palpation and not the fingers. Now measure the fundic height in centimeters correctly. So how do we do that? Place one end of the measuring tape over the symphysis pubis and then carry it over the curvature of the uterus until you reach the fundus. Whatever measurement you get in centimeters will be the approximate fetal age. So now let's do the Leupold's maneuvers. So first the Leupold's maneuver one. You stand on either side of the bed and face the upper part of the mother. Grasp the uterine fundus with both hands and identify what fetal pole occupies the fundus. The fetal head is firm, hard, round, balotable, and movable, whereas the buttocks will feel softer and bulkier. So for Leupold's maneuver 1, we report this as either LM1 cephalic or LM1 breech. For Leupold's maneuver 2, you still face the patient and you grasp the sides of the abdomen with palms of both hands and determine on which side is the fetal back or small parts. Once you've determined where the fetal back is, you determine or count the fetal heart tones using the stethoscope or the fetal Doppler. So for LM2 or Leopold's Maneuver 2, we report this as LM2 fetal back right or fetal back left. So for Leopold's maneuver 3, you still face the mother. Using the thumb and fingers of one hand, grasp the lower portion of the maternal abdomen just above the symphysis pubis. Determine if engagement of the fetal presenting part has occurred. If not engaged, a movable body part will be felt just above the symphysis pubis. Again, the fetal head will be felt as a firm, hard, round, balotable, and movable mass, whereas the fetal breech will be softer and bulkier. So for Leopold's maneuver 3, we report this as LM3 cephalic or LM3 breech if the fetal presenting part is unengaged. For Leopold's maneuver 4, the student reverses position to face the lower part of the mother. Place one hand on either side of the lower pole of the uterus just above the symphysis pubis and determine on which side is the cephalic prominence and, and correctly identify the fetal attitude. If the head presents, one hand is arrested sooner than the other by a rounded body that's called the cephalic prominence, while the other hand descends deeply into the pelvis. If the cephalic prominence is on the same side as the fetal small parts, then the fetal head is in a flexed position. If the cephalic prominence is on the same side as the fetal back, then the head is in an extended position. So once you're done with your examination, explain the findings to the patient, entertain and answer your patient's questions adequately, and also thank the patient. That's it for my lecture. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe in my YouTube channel and my WordPress site.